Now that we've got our basic table view set up, we need to populate it with some data. We'll use an API called the Movie Database to get all the information we need. In order to get the information from the API onto our app, we'll need to make a network request. Once we've successfully retrieved the data, we'll load it into our table view. Let's check out the Movie Database API. There's a link right in the course portal right here under documentation. So the Movie Database API is exactly what it sounds. It's a database that stores all kinds of information about particular movies. So how do we access that data? Let's scroll down to required parameters. We can see here in the documentation that every request needs a valid API key and we can set this as an HTTP parameter. You can see we have a URL followed by an API key. Now, this is where your API key would go. We'll provide you with an API key, but feel free to apply for your own. It's really easy and you can get it almost instantly. APIs have something called endpoints. Endpoints are just a specific collection of data. For instance, there's the now playing endpoint or the popular endpoint or the in theaters now endpoint. For this app, we're gonna target the now playing endpoint. If we go to the left-hand side and scroll down, here's where we can access the now playing endpoint. If we click on get, we can see the URL to get to the now playing endpoint. Now, before we try any of this in our own app, let's load this into a browser and see what the data looks like. I'll copy the URL here and paste it into a new tab. I'll need to add an API key. So I'll go back to the course and if I scroll down here, you can see that there's an API key right here. We're gonna use this. We'll use the question mark to say we're adding a new parameter and we'll say API underscore key equals, and we'll paste in our API key there. You'll need to add a Google Chrome extension to make things a little more pretty. We've put a link for that in the course portal. It's called the JSON View Chrome extension. If you don't already have this installed, go ahead and do that now. Let's take a closer look to see what this data actually means. This first open curly brace means that we're looking at a dictionary. A dictionary is essentially like a filing cabinet. You store information in it, and then you add tags or keys to it in order to find that information. The first key in this dictionary is page one. We don't really care about that. We care about the second key, which is results. Now, right after results, we see this square bracket. This indicates that stored in this key is an array. An array is just a list of ordered things. Right after the square bracket, we see a curly brace, which means, yep, we have an array of dictionaries. I know, getting super meta at this point. Within each dictionary of the array, we have keys like poster path, overview, release date, original title, and a whole lot more stuff. So as you can see, each dictionary in this array represents all the information about a particular movie. This one represents the information about Star Wars. This one represents the information about the Hunger Games. So we can use this as a map in order to drill down and get the exact information we want for each movie and then load it into our table view. Let's go to the portal and grab this network request snippet. Copy that and head back to Xcode. We're gonna put this in the view did load. So I'm gonna make a little space here and paste that right in there. In this video, we're not gonna to delve too deeply into what's happening within the network request, but focus more on what we're putting in and what we're getting out. So as you can see, we first have the constant for our API key. That's gonna tell the API we're legit and we can access their stuff. Next, we've made a constant for the URL and we've plugged our API key here in the end. Now the data we retrieve is called JSON. JSON is just another way to store information like XML. Over here, we run a method to parse our JSON into something that our app can read, which is an NS dictionary. We load that parse JSON that's now an NS dictionary into a constant we'll call response dictionary. And down here, we'll print our response dictionary to the console. Let's run our app and see what happens. Well, it looks like there was a problem. Let's inspect further. It says our connection load failed because of this error. And the reason is, is that we need to adjust our network permissions to allow the request to happen. Let's head back to the course portal to get some help with our internet permissions. Go ahead and click this link. This guide will help us override the SSL requirement of our app transport security. I'll copy this code snippet here. And in Xcode, I'm gonna go over here to my info.plist, right click, and choose open as source code. Scroll to the very bottom and paste your code right here. Go ahead and save the file with command S and let's run the app one more time. Sweet, we can see if we open up our console, 
that we have something very, very similar to what we had in our browser. What I want to do is somehow get all the information from our response dictionary and use it down here in this method where we set the contents of the cell. Now, right now, this method has no access to response dictionary. So what we can do is we can make an instance variable up at the top that can be seen everywhere in the class. It's good practice to make your instance variables right where you make your IB outlets. We want to get that array of dictionaries that represents each movie. So I'll make a property called movies. And I want movies to be an array of NS dictionary. Now with all the things that can go wrong in a network request, it's very possible that for some reason there may be no dictionaries. Like maybe the API is down or for whatever reason. That's why I'm going to use a concept in Swift called the optional. When we're defining a property, we can use the question mark to make it optional. What we're saying is movies might either be an array of NS dictionaries or nothing at all, which is nil. If we write our code to check and unwrap these optionals, our app will be safer and less likely to crash. Let's head back to our network request and load our data into our movies property. So our data came back as response dictionary. So let's try to load that into movies. So we're getting an error. Let's see what that's all about. This tells us that we are trying to assign a value of NS dictionary, a single dictionary, to a type of an array of dictionaries, right? A list of dictionaries. Let's head back to the data that we loaded in our browser to see what's going on. Aha, our network request brings back a single dictionary. We want to drill down to get the results because the results is where we'll find our array of movie dictionaries. To access that point, we'll use the key results. We'll use the syntax with square brackets, quotations, and we'll put our key right in here. Now we're still getting an error. Let's check that out. This time it says we can't assign a value of any object to type array of index dictionary. So let's be a little more explicit with Xcode that this is indeed an array of NS dictionaries. We can say as an array of NS dictionary. Okay, Xcode's still not happy. Let's see what's up. It wants us to force downcast this with the exclamation point. Okay, we'll let Xcode fix it. Still more errors, Xcode? Are you never satisfied? Often when inside a closure like we have here, we'll need to use the explicit self.movies so that Xcode knows that indeed we're talking about movies that belongs to this view controller. Now if we hold option, get this question mark and click movies, we can see that movies has been cast to an array of NS dictionaries. Awesome. Let's head down to the method where we put together our cells, the cell for row at index path method. I'm gonna make a little space here. Now, if we're talking about an individual cell, I'm not interested in the movies, plural. We wanna get a single movie. So we'll reference our movies array of dictionaries and then use the square bracket technique to get the movie at the same position as the cell. That will correspond to the index path dot row. And remember how we made movies an optional in the beginning? Well, at this point, we need to insert an exclamation point to unwrap that. When you put in an exclamation point, you're saying to the compiler, I am positive that there is something in here and it's not nil. If you do this and it is nil, then your app will crash. And if we hold option, get the question mark and click on movie, we can see that it's an NS dictionary, which is exactly what we want. Now let's index into the movie dictionary to get at the title. Let's go back to the data in our browser to see what the key for the movie title is. Fittingly enough, the title seems to be title. But it's always good to check because sometimes the names are a little weird. So to get the title, we can say let title equals movie title. Now, if I option click on title, we'll see the title right now is any object. And what we want it to be is a string so we can put it in our cell label. So we use the same technique we did above and cast this as a string. We can say as string. Let's check out the error. Xcode suggests that we force cast. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. And now option clicking on title returns a string. Perfect, we're all ready to put it into our text label. 
So down here, where we set the cell.textlabel.text to the index path, instead of that, we can just say title. Now there's one more thing we have to do. Remember this number of rows and section method tells the table view how many cells it's gonna have. In our practice app, we returned 20 rows. But in this one, we wanna have the same number of rows as we return movies. It would be logical to say movies.count because that would be the number of movies in our movies array. However, what if something has gone wrong with the network call and our movies array is nil? Returning nil for the number of rows and section will crash the app. Fortunately, we can check to see if movies has data in it or if it's nil. If it does have data, we can do one thing. If it doesn't, we can do another. The syntax looks like this. If let movies equals movies, then do something. Okay, let's break this down. What this is saying is if movies is not nil, then go ahead and assign that to a constant called movies. If it is nil, it will bypass this completely and we can say do something else. In this part of the conditional statement where we know for a fact that movies has data, we can say return movies.count. And if movies is nil, then we'll want to return zero. All right, let's cross our fingers and run our app. Not again, we're looking at a blank table view and after all that hard work, don't worry, there's one very common thing that you'll always forget to leave out and that is to tell the table view to reload its data after the network request has been made. See, the thing is, is all these methods to set up the table view get done before we get information back from the network request. So all you have to do is in your network request, add self.tableview.reloadData. Let's try this again. Awesome, we now have a populated table view of titles from the movies we got back from our API. In the next video, we'll give this a little more style and add what any good movie viewer needs, a poster image.